Good morning everyone. My name is Lucy Cowton and I'm the Sustainability Manager for Futimura based in the UK. I'm going to talk to you today about compostable packaging films, including our own range of compostable and renewable cellulose-based films called NatureFlex. For those of you who don't know Futimura, we're a Japanese-owned company and have six main divisions including cellulose films, non-wovens, fibrous casings and we also manufacture conventional films for the Japanese market. We manufacture approximately 34,000 tonnes of cellulose film annually split between three production sites. These are based in the UK, the US and Japan. We hold a leading global position in the markets for renewable and compostable packaging with NatureFlex films and we also manufacture cellophane films which are renewable but are not certified compostable. In terms of packaging materials, plastics do provide exceptional functionality. They're lightweight, they're easy to transport, generally have a low carbon footprint, they're convenient, they afford excellent product protection and they're easy to print so they can convey all the relevant information to the consumer. It's fair to say that our goal with NatureFlex is to mimic the technical packaging performance that these materials afford. As well as the many advantages that plastics offer, however, we're beginning to realise that they have many unintended consequences, such as litter, in particular marine litter, because we don't have the correct waste management systems in place. Microplastics are another issue which are causing more concern in the environment and also the use of fossil-based resources which unlock sequestered carbon. In 2019, the World Economic Forum identified bioplastics for a circular economy as one of the top 10 emerging technologies. Less than 10% of all the plastic waste generated globally has been recycled, leaving the rest to be landfilled, incinerated or abandoned in the environment where it will persist for hundreds of years. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the diagram on the right hand side from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation showing the linear flows of packaging material which need to be addressed. Biodegradable and compostable plastics can ease these problems by contributing to the goal of the circular economy where plastics are derived from and converted back to biomass. Cellulose has the benefit of being produced from non-food plants or it can be produced from agricultural waste. The Breaking the Plastic Wave report by the Pew Charitable Trust and the Systemic shows that without action, the annual flow of plastic into the ocean will nearly triple by 2040 to 29 million tonnes. It also shows that there is no single solution to end ocean plastic pollution and that industry and governments have to take action. In order to reduce plastic pollution, we need to look at eight system interventions, including reducing plastic consumption, designing products for recycling and scaling up collection. Also included was substitution of plastic with paper and compostable materials. In the report, it was stated that paper and compostables need to substitute 17% of plastic, mainly flexibles, as these films can be problematic to recycle and are prone to littering. As previously mentioned, compostable materials contribute to the goal of a circular economy and you can see here that NatureFlex films are produced using cellulose from fast growing trees sourced from managed plantations. The wood pulp arrives in the form of bales which are converted into transparent film. Sometimes we refer to it as transparent paper. A cellulose film has many properties in common with paper such as deadfold and heat resistance but it also has optics and mechanical properties similar to BOPP and polyester film. Uncoated films are suitable for applications such as twist wrap and bag making, where the bags are glued, but in many cases, coated films are required for their barrier and heat sealability properties. Once the films have been coated, they're usually supplied in real form to converters or brand owners, where they can be printed and maybe laminated and used to wrap a range of different products. After use they can be composted either industrially or at ambient temperature as they're also suitable for home composting. I've already mentioned some of the technical properties of NatureFlex but in addition to the excellent deadfold, high heat resistance, good gloss and transparency, the films also have very good gas and mineral oil barrier. They have excellent chemical resistance and the films are naturally anti-static, which gives them enhanced machinability. 
They're resistant to oils, fats and greases and have a wide heat seal range which allows them to run quickly on the packaging machines. Due to the way we formulate the coatings, we can modify the moisture barrier from breathable for fresh produce type applications to high barrier for dry products such as coffee. They're also generally easy to print and laminate and are suitable for many different applications. In terms of environmental attributes, the wood pulp we use is sourced from either FSC or PEFC certified plantations. The films are generally greater than 90% biobased carbon based on the ASTM D6866 test method, which uses radiocarbon analysis to compare fossil based carbon with renewable carbon. The films are also certified to the industrial composting standards EM13432 and ASTM D6400. They're also certified to the Australian standard AS4736. As mentioned before, Naturefix films are also certified to TUV Austria's OK Compost Home Protocol. They've been tested for high solid anaerobic digestion at 52 degrees using ISO 15985 and were shown to be completely biodegradable under these conditions. Some of the films have been tested for biodegradability in wastewater and also in a marine environment. The films were found to biodegrade sufficiently under both conditions, although most films struggle to meet the 12 week disintegration requirement under marine conditions. This is a particularly stringent test, however, as 12 weeks is the time frame allowed for industrial composting, which is a managed process. I'll come back to biodegradability in other environments on the next slide, but for Futamura, compostability is the most important end-of-life solution, and as part of the new plastics economy commitment, our goal is for all of our cellulose films for packaging to be compostable by 2025. So just a few words on definitions for bioplastics, as this always seems to be a confusing area. Plastics, biodegradable plastics and compostable plastics can all be manufactured from either fossil-based resources or bio-based renewable resources. Just because a material is made from renewable resources does not mean that it will automatically be biodegradable. Compostable plastics are a subset of biodegradable plastics which have specific requirements in terms of biodegradation and disintegration. The tests are carried out at a specific temperature and for a specific duration. Also, they have to comply with the heavy metal limits and pass the relevant ecotoxicity tests. Compostable plastics or compostable materials are well defined by various standards such as EM13432. Compostable plastics or materials can be organically recycled and as such, they can facilitate the separate collection of organic waste. Biodegradability is often believed to be a magic litter solving solution, which it isn't. Although biodegradability in other environments is interesting, such as biodegradability in soil for mulch films, for example, or applications in horticulture. The relevant standards should be applied, however. There are a number of common myths surrounding compostable packaging. For example, compostables are a contaminant. Compostable packaging represents less than 1% of the plastic packaging on the market and there is no evidence to suggest that bioplastics damage plastic recycling. In Italy, it has been shown that there is a tolerance of between 5 and 10% for plastic recycling streams to accept bioplastics without adverse effects. The likelihood is that other plastics will have a much more significant impact on a particular recycling stream because of course there will be much more of the material in the marketplace. Also, the plastic can be screened and relatively easily separated using a number of analytical techniques. The bigger concern is that of traditional plastics contaminating the food waste stream, which is, a much, which is much harder to deal with and is very costly. Often we hear that compostable materials have no value as they are just transformed into carbon dioxide, but composting needs energy to happen and the energy is provided by the metabolism of sugars, polysaccharides and other energy rich molecules present in the feedstock. Other substances such as lignin are needed to make more stable organic products like humus. Hence a balanced feedstock is required and cellulose and biodegradable plastics provide energy and biomass during the composting process to generate compost which is needed for the agronomic benefits which it gives to the soil. In EM13432, 
The compostable materials need to show at least 90% biodegradation, but this is an optimised test to show the ultimate biodegradation potential. We also hear that there's no infrastructure for compostables. This isn't true, as there are more than 50 composting plants which can accept food waste and compostable packaging in the UK, plus around 170 AD plants, some of which can accept compostable films. The infrastructure does exist and it will increase as food waste collections are rolled out, but operators are reluctant to treat compostable materials because they are wary of contamination from non-compostable plastics. I've already mentioned the fourth point about being able to recycle our way out of this crisis and the fact that a combination of actions are required. We obviously need to improve the collections for recycling and retailers are starting to collect flexible films, but this won't work for every structure and application and so alternative complementary solutions are still required. In terms of technical properties, probably the main issue for compostable packaging is around the barrier. In particular the moisture barrier, as generally these materials are moisture permeable. However, NatureFlex films offer excellent moisture barrier properties and oxygen barrier properties and can give MVTRs of between 1 and 2 grams per metre squared per day under tropical conditions in laminated form, making them suitable for a wide range of applications. In terms of scale, organic waste is a much larger percentage of the waste that we generate than plastic waste and so is a very important sector. The role played by industrial and home compostable products in helping to achieve the EU's ambitious targets for organic waste recovery and its diversion away from landfill and incineration is very important. Mandatory food waste collections across the EU will drive this change in the next few years. As I mentioned before, lack of infrastructure is not the main issue, but lack of acceptability, which hopefully will improve going forwards, as composters realise that compostable packaging is beneficial to their process and can help to reduce the amount of non-compostable plastic contamination. Every tonne of organic waste diverted from landfill saves fugitive CO2 emissions, can create energy and will produce soil enriching compost, and the use of compostable packaging will help to increase the yield. In another report from the Alan MacArthur Foundation called Catalyzing Action, they showed a number of different applications which are problematic for recycling. Small format packaging, including tear-offs, sachets, sweet wrappers, will never be recycled due to the fact that they are just too small and will be sorted out even if they are collected. Some of these can be designed out, but compostable packaging could be used for some of these applications. Multi-material packaging is also very difficult to recycle due to the inseparability of the layers and although some multi-layer packaging applications have been made from monomaterials now, this may not be possible for all applications and so again compostables are a good alternative and can provide the functionality required in many cases. If food contaminate packaging such as coffee capsules or takeaway food packaging was compostable then this would help to recover the nutrient content of the packaging as well as avoiding landfill. A couple of years ago RAP published a document entitled Considerations for Compostable Plastic Packaging which contained guidance on the best practice use of compostables. The key potential applications included food caddy liners and other bags which could subsequently be used for caddy liners for collecting organic waste, fruit and vegetable stickers which will become a contaminant in the food waste stream if they are made from traditional plastic and so these should be made from compostable materials. In some countries, for example Belgium and France, it is or will be mandated to use home compostable fruit labels. Tea bags and coffee pods are other examples of products which make sense for composting according to RAP as they contain food, food waste which otherwise would be lost. Certain items like food trays which are contaminated with food are not suitable for recycling and closed loop situations where there's control over all the materials used and the compostable packaging items can be collected together with the food waste also make sense to be compostable. This slide shows some examples made from compostable films or materials which correlate well with the previous two slides in terms of maximising food waste collection, avoiding contamination of compost, closed loop scenarios and contaminated items. 
The Alan MacArthur New Plastics Economy Catalyzing Action Report did include small format flexible packaging as well, and there are a number of discussions ongoing in this area, as it is a challenging area to get right, but we believe that compostables can be part of the solution. And this is also the case for multi-layer packaging, which I touched on earlier. And here you can see some applications which are using compostable laminates to replace the conventional non-recyclable structures. So it's not about one material versus another or trying to fit every application into the same box. It's about using the right material for the right application and the end of life solution needs to be taken into account to ensure that this happens. We all know that polyester bottles have a viable recycling stream and although we need to improve the collection rates, it absolutely makes sense to recycle in this case. For coffee pods, which contain approximately 25 grams of wet waste coffee inside a 4 gram capsule, it makes sense to compost. Thank you for your attention.